We are very excited for today. We have uh, tables of, uh, of Ukrainians. They're, they're like selling things. We're, uh, we're, uh, we're fundraising for the Ukrainian Foundation. And we're going to have live interviews with two Ukrainian artists. Uh, Al 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 Albatina Kahatsi, who uh, uh, lives close to Kiev, and, and, and Mikhailo Skop, who is in Viv. Uh, both of them are extraordinary artists. They're, uh, they're celebrated uh, uh, worldwide, actually. They have uh, exhibitions everywhere. Uh, uh, also, uh, uh, behind me, you know, we, we have a, 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 a Alessia Hadiman, uh, her, uh, her beautiful painting. And this is all part of bringing to Portland uh, uh, just a higher awareness of, of Ukraine and, and, and the kinds of, of amazing culture that's there, but, but also in this time of war, you know, that's important. So, that's for the visual art. Now, what we're doing uh, in, the, in, in the later part um, uh, is, uh, uh, is, is really amazing, because we've taken the war poems of, of, of Helena Crook, and we have dancers and, and writers who have written a one-act plays. So, what you're gonna see is three one-act plays and four dances, which will be interpreted by Portland uh, uh, dancers and actors and writers of, 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 how, how, of Helena's Crook's poems. Totally amazing, and, uh, and I can't wait to see what uh, people come up with. In, uh, in just a few minutes, we'll be uh, doing the uh, dances and uh, the one-act plays of uh, the interpretation of, of, of uh, uh, Elaine um, Cook's poems, war poems. But before I do that, uh, I have the uh, pleasure of presenting uh, Tatiana Barbaric, Bar uh, uh, a check. So, uh, so part of this is it's a fundraiser, and uh, uh, last weekend uh, we had uh, uh, puppet shows and uh, and different events, and uh, I am very happy to say that we raised three hundred and fifty-one dollars and fifty-one and fifty cents to uh, to uh, donate to the uh, um, uh, to the Ukrainian Foundation, and it's not. Uh, uh, me donating, it's all of you, you know, participating and being here and, uh, 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 and helping. So, um, there you go. Should I still take a picture, I think? Thank you so much for the great work that you do. Thank you. First of all, thank you so much for you guys being here and spending Saturday with us. Uh, I'm representing today Ukrainian Foundation, and it's a group of volunteers that came together in 2014 when war started, and we, of course, work even more intensely and um, much more work. <laughs> Uh, since last February. So uh, that our main goal is to make victory of Ukraine um, as soon as possible. We are sending, uh, like our organization is volunteer based, so we send all money directly to uh, soldiers uh, to help them to survive winter, to keep their lives if it's possible at all. So uh, we are buying tourniquets, so people don't die from bleeding when they lose extremities, we buy them warm clothes, and actually, anything they're asking, we're working with them directly, bringing our aid uh, very often personally, and uh, it goes, we kind of know about every dollar <laughs> that you're spending. So again, thank you so very much, and especially thank you for volunteers, because none of that would be possible without volunteers, the people that spend their time and money to help good cause, to keep people alive, and actually fighting for freedom. 
again, Spirited Pig and Spirited Strong Evil today. So thank you so very much again. And uh, please, if you feel moved to donate, we do have uh, business cards with QR codes. It's all tax deductible. So please come over and we will be happy to give you the cards or information. And again, thank you so much. And thank you for doing all of it. Uh, just one question. So uh, you are, are weapons purchased with your uh, weapons No, we don't, we don't do weapons at all. Uh, main reason probably because it was not our intent to begin with. Uh, so uh, we are keeping soldiers alive and healthy as much as possible. Uh, we do uh, sometimes buy um, like blood stopping, bleeding stopping equipment, hemostatic equipment, uh, but we never, uh, probably uh, chest seals is the closest it gets, but it's always only protective things. Yeah. Plus, I don't think it's legal. I think when we pay taxes, we kind of help this way, I think. the fact that wars prevail as much as we try to spread love. Uh, wars make money, wars um, uh, just uh, also are very popular in the news. Um, we seem to thrive, some of us, on, um, on the news of violence um, I recently looked up how many wars happened over a 10-year period, and I have to tell you, it was heartbreaking. Uh, close to 100 in the world over a 10-year period, and even now, there are so many wars happening, um, it's quite... Um, it's crazy. Um, a few that I'm going to name, we don't even hear about much on the news. Kashmir unrest in India. Darfur, Africa. Myanmar, Asia, civil war. South Sudan, civil war in Africa. Peru, South America, civil war. The Democratic Republic of Congo in Africa, which of course has been going on for as long as I can remember. West Papua, civil war in Asia. 
And of course, a lot of children are just born into war and they grow up fighting. Uh, the Cab Cabinda War in Angola, Africa. Uh, war of terror, terror in Egypt. The hybrid wars in Africa beginning in Mozambique, spreading throughout South Central Africa to Zambia, Angola, and uh, Malawi, uh, Armenia and Azerbaijan, Japan and China in the Eastern uh, China Sea. Uh, these are just some of the wars happening right now, many of which we don't hear about. And our United States, um, just so everyone has this knowledge, has the biggest uh, funds for our military. And I was shocked to find out um, it is around 3,200 actually more than $3,200 billion a year. Um, and these are, these are things that are not fun to think about, but they're important to know. Um, I would like us to take a moment, since we are so privileged living in the United States, having food, having clean water, having clothes, having a bed to sleep in, to take a moment uh, to be grateful and also to send our love and our honor, honoring to those around the world and of course in the U Ukraine right now who are suffering, who have suffered, um, those who have died and those who are mourning the dead. So if we can just take a few minutes of silence to do a little meditation in our hearts and a little prayer.
happiest of, of uh, expressions um, with, with these, these mournful, sad poems. They are beautiful as well, although heartbreaking. And we have some amazing talent that has volunteered um, to be with you today. And we are going to be starting out with a monologue written by, uh, written and directed by Valentin Vinokurov, um, performed by Megan Kivan, Kivain, and, um, sorry, I'm, I'm gonna be really screwing up dance here at times. Um, and before um, she starts, I am going to read the poem. It's based on the poem, In This House. this house, the body of a poem, still warm, hangs on the nail of the mundane, touched to its core, like a reproach, like proof that I was here, and you were here, and there was something between us irresistible as breathing, uncertain as a kiss, unimportant to anyone but us. I love in you a possibility which we haven't used up, the road which we could have walked but didn't the choice which we didn't make, wanting it all at once, instead of a little bit at a time. Sometimes a poem turns into a house that you build at the edge of an abyss, entirely out of a need to overcome reality. Dear Ivan, I remember when we were young, going up down the street from you, I realized one day that I had always known your face voice, your hands. We played while our fathers joined hands in the field to pray. We could identify each other's families cooking blindfolded. We were the same two spirits, you and I. You fawned over me while I batted you around like a cat's toy. I yearned for you as you skipped through the fog of my ghost. And always we laughed over the river, down the canyon, in the woods, chasing Tolkien's orcs or Carol's Jabberwocky, taunting Baba Yaga with our crude toys and charms. We were strong then, as 
stronger than we have ever been, stronger than we will ever be. I remember when we were free. The paths that lay before us were innumerable, and they stretched further than anyone could see tell. What would be doctors, lawyers, soldiers, teachers, believers, disruptors, swords or shields, arrows or hammers. Is free will only for when the will is free? Should we go where we dream and yearn to be or follow where we are led? Can our free will find those two things in harmony like you and I did? Or will we be forced to choose like they did to us? After all, we were destined to become all of those things. Doctors, lawyers, soldiers. But most of all, we became rebels. We became faithful. We became survivors. I remember when we were in love. Long days and short years I spent draped across your chest, waiting for the hour of morning when a shard of light would pierce the dark amber of your eyes, scattering mirth across our gleaming faces. The breathing rocks beneath the earth could not have swallowed me while you were mine. I would have torn apart the gates of hell to return to you. I told myself there was no distance that could ever separate us, that your struggles were mine also, that there was no feat, no foe, no monster that our devotion could not skewer on a pike to ward off the hateful spirits. I remember when we were in denial, that our enemy was not at our doorstep, that our countrymen were not fleeing and seeking shelter. We knew that our bond could weather the storm, but we didn't stop to think it we could. We saw our beautiful mountains through the mist and refused to acknowledge that they were obscured. When their boots first stepped on our soil, there were those that still didn't want to believe. Hell, I didn't want to believe that a fate such as this could befall our world. But that did not stop our brothers, our sisters, our fathers, our mothers, our uncles, our aunts, our cousins, our children from leaving, whether to fight or to run. And it didn't stop them, and it didn't stop you, and it didn't stop me. And it wasn't until I turned around and you weren't there that I knew I had a new lie disbelief. I remember when we were worried. Long summer days brought with it a rabid fear of the dark and the hellfire that sprang forth from it. February, like an earthquake, split our lives. You left me with a photograph and the memory of your caress echoing against my face. I swore that I would always keep your name at the base of my tongue so that I might scream it out during my waking nightmare. But I could not shake the feeling that you would not be able to hear me. Those long, cold nights went on without any reprieve. The sun itself conceded the battle to the dust and the shells and the wreckage. Maybe I'll see the sun again before I see you. Maybe there won't be anything to see at all. Time will tell, but I fear it will not bring you back to me. I remember when we were angry. Our anger was stoked by the fact that our enemy was closer and closer and closer, and we ran, and we scattered, and we regrouped, and everywhere we went, the darkness followed. Through once sacred sanctuaries, we made our way in circles, through hospitals and schools and fields and houses of loved ones. They sent their missiles and bullets and blood, and we sent ours back. They encroached, we retook. Those who could not fight, fought to protect the peaceful. So I took up arms, and I gathered the old and the infirm 
and the children and all the food and clothing we could find. And the memory of your face contained in the photograph you left me. And we ran, seething into the night. I remember when we were horrified. And the choking clouds receded, and the horrors that we thought we had conquered rose once more from the torn soil. Arms reaching out, legs running away, faces cut, screaming, and hearts asunder. The soul of this place ripped apart and scattered across the walls in gleeful violence. Our friends, once whole, now cried to us, begging their own photographs to be secreted away and their vengeances fulfilled. The wreck, the slaughter, the ruin, this may be all our children ever know. And whether given as gifts or earned as medals will depend on what truth they choose to defend. My truth was lost with you. So I came to rest here, underground, to haunt the stasis alone until the gale above quiets and your body washes up on the shore. I remember when we were grieving. In the quiet, this mausoleum is where our love came back to me, furious, wanting, and incomplete. All at once, the rockets that had scarred the land above suddenly made their impact on me. I sharply felt the pain of your loss, the chaos of our escape, the rage of our betrayal, the guilt of my survival. Remember when we were holding on? Someday, all of these clothes will be worn away, these walls crumbled, the water evaporated, the dry rations licked clean, and the aggressors turned away and inward. And on that day, I will know that I have found you. And until then, I will protect the memory of us both, the love we bore, the lives we lived, the families we loved, the dreams we yearned for, the roads we set these traumas have a way of making bomb shelters out of all of us, caught within ourselves until the nightmare abates and all that is left is us. Us, the mournful pilgrims, me and you. Just. based on Pelia Krug's poem, Survival, which will also be spoken as they dance, created and performed by Larissa Krutz and Syra Ray of the Candescence Collective. Keeps us afloat, doesn't let us drown. 
and shoves us out of the water. Besides the Archimedean strength and the Sisyphean effort, besides the subcutaneous fat and the desire to swim as far as possible in this deep alarm that sobers us up, that drives us, and the acrid despair that tightens around our ribcage and forces us to inhale and exhale. We are what we repress in the margins of our consciousness. In a chaotic video sequence with dreams about the worst, Fusion of childlike sensations, which we fail to either remember or forget. What we aren't yet ready to admit, not even to yourself, not to mention to others, even in the face of death. We are driven not by strength, but by weakness. We always swim to the farthest shore. But the only ones who know this are those who don't lack. For the strength to swim, to get out on dry land, to look back, to take for granted that somewhere in the middle of the water. Because the bottom is already closer than the shore. Because the bottom is always closest. And the body has already refused to swim. And the lungs to breathe. from those grade school war day drills. There will never be another war, said the teacher, but children, turn out the lights. In the event of a nuclear blast, detonated weapon of mass destruction, or some other incident, you should go down to the bomb shelter without panicking. Take only the essentials, nothing extra, warm things in case war goes till winter. Kids, you know they don't turn on the heating in bomb shelters. But won't it be hot there anyway? A snide remark from someone in the back row. Hornovitz, it's still unclear they'll even let you in. Not everyone will fit. There are limited water and food supplies. I already know. There's no avoiding panic in Armageddon. How many will be trampled on their way down to the shelter? I can't imagine, God, how you will choose. Every 10,000th? Every millionth? And what margin of error? 
I believe there will be no discrimination by gender, race, creed. I want to believe this. How many breaths of air for each while they wait for their deus ex machina? Each class, said the teacher, must follow its leader. And mind you, no running in the paths between bunks. Carry a card with your name in your breast pocket. In cursive, not printed like your spadechko. Why not? This still surprises me. Maybe so the angels who carry souls away because no one will really survive. So the angels in white clothes with red cross and crescent. So the angels know, little one, how to address you. Avoid this thicket. 
It's mine upon mine. A tangle of tripwires. You never know what a word really means. Which memory you can touch. Which will debt.
My love language has grown so big that my tongue come out with it and my soul come out with this soulless language. <laughs> My love language has grown so big that my tongue come out with it and my soul come out with this soulless language. Cutting, they make me feel like a child again. 
it up. It almost looks like a sun. It did. It's an abstract sunflower. That's the flower of Ukraine, right? Yeah, good. You know, um, at the start of the war, I heard this story about this uh, old woman in Ker Kerson? Kerson? Kerson. And she was cursing out the Russian soldiers. <laughs> she called them uh, fascist invaders and said she was going to give them sunflower seeds so that they will grow from their bodies when they are killed and all of Ukraine will be filled with sunflowers. <laughs> it is a strong curse, especially when a Ukrainian grandmother says it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I never heard anything like it. And I will certainly not look at sunflowers the same way again. Exactly! And so the sunflower becomes not just a symbol of cheerful things, but of anger and strength. And as I believe you have to take what's inside you and put it out this way. Is, uh, is that why you're making one now? Yes. I believe it is my way of taking and putting it out. The way that you do when you write, when you are not avoiding, that is. Um, avoiding? How is it that you said flaky? Flaky. Ah, mm. avoidant. Mm. Yes. And what is it that you think you are avoiding when you flake? <laughs> <laughs> Probably um, answers in my own life that I don't want to look at. Uh, yes, I know that feeling well. I think every woman does all over the world. And um, and is art how you look at the answers? Well. It's how I try to answer questions like yours. I, I only know how to ask questions. I, I don't know how to answer them. I have an idea. I think you should come and collage with me. Oh, oh no. No, just come. No, come. no. Come I'm, on. No. It's, it's for your writing, for your article. Oh, but, what, 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 oh, fine, you can take that. Put it down there. Sit next to me. Yes. This is your scissors or the glue. Come help me with the sunflower. We always need more sunflowers. I don't want to mess up your work. <laughs> it's not possible. It's a collaboration. It's fun. Go on. Okay, I'll try. Thank you. space for others to do the same. Mm. And you remind me of that quote. Oh. Just, despite everything that's happened to you, you still have yourself and <coughs> your art. Thank you, but I don't think that you would recognize that or remember it if you did not feel it in yourself and recognize it in yourself as well. So then the question to answer becomes, what does it mean to you Devon to live authentically. I I suppose to speak your truth, mm -hmm. honor yourself, and not care so much about what other people think. Oh, I still struggle with that one. That's a hard one. Even if it doesn't show, I struggle with it. But you cannot live a brave life without disappointing some people. That's true, I suppose. I, I still, I still worry too much about what other people think. Naturally, if if you don't feel like you belong, it feels like a threat. It brings up feelings of deep fear, and so to keep the peace, we conform. Other than spreading your artwork to a larger audience in the states. What do you hope to get out of this article?
if sharing my experiences helped at least one woman, has helped her to know that even out of terrible changes can come hope, then I, I know I will have done something of meaning. Yeah. <coughs> watering the roadside bushes as long as they could to slow their march to foreign war. And none of us knew where the war zone actually was. No one understood the true scope of the losses. When a woman called Hope came to lift our spirits, she had no intention of dying. Each person, she told us, carries their own war and a weapon they'll clutch to the end. And victory is a whore. She doesn't care where she lies. She belongs to anyone. And we listened to a roll of thunder leave her throat while she sang to us strange marching drills and lullabies. Every drop of her saliva, a bomb, <coughs> containing the poison of love. Because every woman, she warned, knows this kind of love that brings her low, shoves a gun barrel in her mouth, and does not kill her. After the rains pass through her, troop after troop washes away the blood. your hands. 
You're outsourcing me to the rest of them. Let's not get carried away, Russia. Mm. <laughs> oh. You're not a warrior, you're a coward. Who's the one with the gun this huh? Oh. Soldiering is in my bones. It's in the name. Vladislav. Glory. Power. Victory. You have got the ambition of a pig farmer. Oh, yeah. I told you not to eat that crap. I'll be fine. Thanks. Uh, you know, when a stomach bug's coming on, my father, he had a trick. Two swigs of vodka and ten push-ups. Works like a charm every time. Fine. Don't mind if I do. It's your yeah. vodka. Yeah, 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 I got the two flasks in there. Take the one with the crest. That is the good stuff. The Vladislav family crest. The Vladislav family crest. Oh, God. <laughs> Is that what the Russian army calls vodka? No wonder you're losing a oh, Don't forget the push ups. Fine. Take a few steps back, Captain. Okay. Five. You know. Three. Two. You might be winning the battle, but you're going to lose the war. Oh. Is that right? You know, your country betrayed us both by sending you here. Oh, you naive fool! Who liberated you from the Nazis? If it wasn't us, it'd be someone else. You know, not only do you refuse the food that I offer you so generously as your captor, but you feed so heartily on your own propaganda. Oh, please, just take me my death. Blech. Fine. With pleasure. That is a little better. All right, forward march. Oh, God. Look at this. Look at all these stumps. Looks like a hundred acres have been cut down. Well, it's getting cold. Old man Winter's knocking at the door. Bump, 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 bump. All these Ukrainian trees. Just oh. gone. What your people would rather cut down than concede? Well, you wrecked our energy grid. Oh, did I now? Yes, you did. Oh, there's the hatred in your eyes. You want to kill me now, don't you? Do it! Do it! I, well, might. Don't do it to me, Troll. Oh. You're just beginning to see things as they are. Who are you? Me? Call me Hope. This man you hold as your prisoner, he can't see me. Oh, great. I'm going insane. Have you? <laughs> Not quite. I've always been here. It's only now you can see me, Dimitro, devotee of the Earth Mother. Demeter and I go way back. You and who? Why, the goddess of agriculture, of course. So disconnected from your ancestors you are. What do you know about me? You walk this Earth, do you not? Yes, of course. I see, Dimitro, but there is much that you haven't seen. So you are getting there. Are you well? Yes, I'm, uh, I'm fine. Glad. I'm sorry I have to do this, uh, but uh, I have to hot tie you. <laughs> oh, I didn't know you liked me that much. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, neither did I. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That'll do. Okay, um, Hope, if that is your name. Why are you here and what do you want with me? I've come to deliver you a message. I've been speaking with the people of your village. You know, should it's been in ruins since March. I got out. What about the others? The others, your friends, your family, they passed on. But death is not the end, as you believe it to be. <laughs> Those trees, oh. a landscape devoured. Yeah. You saw the real war against the mother. And only when one sees what is really happening can they see me. What did my people tell you? They spoke of what it truly means to be a hero. You could have killed him. Why didn't you? What are you talking about? Who are you? Oh, I'm the one thing you want more than anything. Vodka? <laughs> Victory. Did you not tell Demetro to drink from the flask with the family trust on it? Buddy, the other one had your suicide pill. You could have been done with this. With him. Look, he's a harmless villager. I'm not going to be the one to kill him. Look, the guy's gone nuts. I'm out of here. You scared? You see these grand proclamations of glory, and yet here you are. Walking to your death. The man's a shit 
shameless coward. What do you know about bravery? <laughs> you imbecile! <laughs> Forgive you. You you 
what? Forgive, forgive me. Why? Because we're both as good as dead. Wait, dead? Oh. No, 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 no. I can save you. I can save you in my bag. I got medical supplies. I've got medical supplies. I can find them. Go, do what you can. But I know that I'm dying. What? what? You can call me Hope, Vladislav. You can. You can see. Dimitro! You've killed him. What? Hope. Hope! Hope! What kind of name is that? Hope! I, when this man is dead! The death of the body is not where it ends, Vlad. But I, but I killed I killed him. Death merely initiates rebirth. You can now see. So, there is hope for me.
you everyone for coming and supporting these great artists and supporting a great cause. Uh, John Tipley, are you ready to, oh, are you gonna speak instead? Or John, are you gonna speak first? Okay, we're gonna talk about the fundraiser, we're gonna talk about the art here, or maybe not, I don't know what we're gonna talk about, but let me give you the microphone. So I, I'm John Tepley, and I uh, just want to tell you about uh, all these uh, paintings are a collaborative work that we've done with uh, uh, many different countries. And uh, over the uh, next four months here at the Lloyd Center, uh, we're going to be celebrating 10 different countries. Uh, Ukraine was the uh, first one that we celebrated, and it's, uh, it, and it's a fundraiser also. And uh, uh, Microphone okay. further up, up to people can't hear you, I was told. Uh, what about now? Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. yes? Great. Hi. My name is Tatiana Trudal. I'm part of the Ukrainian community of Oregon, Portland, and I first met John during the pandemic when he was doing the Global Art Festival, focusing one of them on Ukraine. So that's when I first saw the art of Leftina Kahidze the two murals that are behind you. And uh, after that very interesting, successful program, we introduced John to Olesya Hudima, and her mural is at the front as you come in into the space. That mural was sent, well, the um, uh, host, I don't know the American word for it, was sent to Ukraine, to Tevnopil, Ukraine. And I have a picture of her drawing it in Ukraine. So that was done before the war, and now she is a refugee in Italy. And it's just so painful. And Aleftena, who is, uh, whose work is behind you, you know, her area was occupied, and you know, she talked to us about shelling. She's still here shelling because she's still being shelled, and same as Mikhailo. So I really appreciate you coming here and enjoying this art created by Ukrainian artists, but trying to you know, show us what it is like to live under shelling and to create under shelling, and that there are some things that are worth fighting for, like your freedom, your dignity, your country. So I really appreciate your coming, and I would encourage you to read Ukrainian poetry, to look at Ukrainian art, because for so many years, even when I was a kid living in the Soviet Union, we were told, Russian art is great. There is great Russian art and there is everybody else. You know, you, you just nothing. And uh, in my country, I was living in Ukraine, but all the Ukrainian language classes were closed, only Russian was spread. Ukrainian artists, many of them were killed in the 30s. They were not published. There were no translations into Ukrainian. So when Ukraine became independent, finally we saw so much Ukrainian art again getting free. And not just Ukrainian, also Crimean Tatar and all the Roma, all the many nationalities that were suppressed by the Russian colonial power were suddenly free. And again, now in the areas of Ukraine that are occupied, again, Ukrainian language is banned, Ukrainian language books are burned, same, same story about Crimean Tatar books. So again, here, Ukrainians are partly fighting to be able to speak and create in Ukrainian. Um, a lot of this colonialism is also here locally. Multnomah County Library, until last year, did not allow Ukrainian language books. I was fighting with them so long for that, that it, they only allowed Russian language. They started buying Ukrainian. I was at Powell's yesterday. They have huge, huge shelves of Russian books. There are only two in Ukrainian. So I do encourage you to break away with colonialism and try to learn about cultures of countries that were colonized. And they're basically trying to have their voice heard. So please look at Ukrainian books, Ukrainian authors. We do have some good translations. We have so much Ukrainian art right now in music. And we're really happy that John gave you this opportunity to see this art. So thank you so much. And uh, we will have a video of some of these performances.
performance is because for the Ukrainian artists, it would be great to see this performance is based on the poetry from Ukraine. So thank you again for this opportunity for Ukrainian poet from Lviv to see Americans interpreting your poetry. I mean, this is such a great opportunity, so thank you. And yeah, I was going to say something about Ukrainian Foundation. So please, donate to Ukrainian Foundation. Ukrainian Foundation is an organization that was created by Ukrainians. All of the people there are Ukrainian Americans. And uh, our main, main goal is supporting Ukraine and Ukrainians. And right now, it's basically helping them save their lives because Russia attacked again without much warning. You know, they've been telling for months everybody that they are just on military exercises, and uh, they were warning signs. But we just could not believe and did not want to believe that there will be this full-scale invasion. But once the invasion happened, we started buying here in Oregon tourniquets because one of the best companies that uh, that makes tactical medicine is here in Tualatin, Sam Medical. So we raise money, we buy, we buy tourniquets, and we have people who actually flying to Poland, because you can't fly into Ukraine right now, it's a war zone, I'm flying to Poland and carry that to our partner organizations in Ukraine that distribute it to civilians, journalists, medical workers, soldiers, anybody whose life is in danger because shelling can happen uh, any day uh, during the day or the night and if there is shelling you do need to have tourniquet to stop bleeding so you don't die before you can uh, be taken to the hospital so medical supplies are life-saving right now so most of the things we do are medical supplies there is some portion that we also um, also used for cultural events, uh, because right now we have a lot of refugees here in Oregon from Ukraine, many of them with little children, basically while there is no power during severe winter, they are sheltering here. So we also have some events for the Ukrainian community, just caroling together, singing together, some resource events, uh, but the main thing is medical supplies for Ukraine. And uh, we also um, did projects with stoves because no electricity, people have to use stoves, wood stoves to cook and for heat. So anything that Ukrainians ask us for and tell us this is the most urgent need right now, we work with them to satisfy it. So Ukrainian Foundation, Ukrainian.Foundation on the web or uh, at the back we have also uh, vendors, some of them are from Ukrainian Foundation. So when we take bags with medical supplies to Ukraine, we did not want to come empty handed, so we bought some clothing made in Ukraine, other things made in Ukraine to partly provide income to people who are there and partly to bring stuff to sell here, fundraise, buy medical supplies. It's like a circle of life right now. So please buy things, donate, buy books, Ukrainian books, read, look at Ukrainian movies. There will be one uh, nominated for Oscar documentary. So please support the culture of Ukraine. And thank you very much again for coming. So thank you again for coming. And we are going to call up all of our uh, artists who volunteered their time, energy, to do a group bow now. Thank you for being an audience without you.